Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, the scene presents views from the 22. We have Vic Jr., Mo Schefter, along hand, alongside with your guy Germ So True here. We have the views from the 22 off-season show. We're basically going through all the divisions and everything else like that. This is show number six, and the division we have today is the NFC East. We got the the Skins. Mm-hmm. We got Whoa, the, Washington the Washington football team. The Washington football team. I guess. Yes. Hey, hey, no, I had to had to put that segue in there. We're gonna start <laughs> with actually the Washington football team. Mm-hmm. We're gonna bounce our way around Giants, Eagles, and then Cowboys. So we're gonna let's start with the Washington football team. Mr. Schefter, go on ahead, take it away. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Obviously, the Washington has been one of the more active teams in this offseason. Uh, they started off by hiring Ron Rivera, and he got to work from Saints from day one, really trying to change the culture in Washington, or at least in the football team, because there's the rest of it. Um, and he's been working, and, he, and he's been doing an excellent job. And he, I think he has molded this team with this final 53 to the guys that he feels will not only give him the best chance on the football field, but more importantly, the guys that will give him the best chance at a, at a good culture and a healthy locker room. Uh, they, they got rid of Trent Williams. They traded him to the 49ers. He didn't want to be there. I thought it was a good thing for the locker room and the, just the reputation of everybody involved to just say, hey, man, you don't want to be here. We get it. The previous staff violated you cool, we'll, we'll take you somewhere, we'll send you somewhere where they'll appreciate you and somewhere where you can actually compete and win. They also uh, let Josh Norman walk, who uh, Ron Rivera was his first coach in the NFL. I think that speaks volumes to what Ron Rivera thinks about Josh, Normal, Josh Norman. They also let Quentin Dunbar walk. They, they may miss him, uh, but again, all of, of a thing about getting younger and getting guys that'll fit that locker room better. They signed Kendall Fuller, brought him back. They tagged Brandon Scherf and made sure that he's going to try to he's going to be in Washington for for the a ex- very long extended period of his career. And they also signed Wes Schweitzer, interior offensive lineman. And I think again, no beef, no Lombardi. So those are two crucial pieces. And then in the draft, they drafted one of the best players we have scouted over the last five years in Chase Young. And now you look at that defensive line. With, with uh, the two Alabama boys, with Ryan Kerrigan, they are going to be deep. They are going to be strong. They're going to be quick. They're going to be physical. It's all going to be dependent on the play of Dwayne Haskins. Now, Dwayne was 2-5 and five in 2019, but there's a plus side to that. He started 0-5, but he finished 2-0. and and, and so, hey, we got to look at the plus sides, right? Now, in those five starts, he had three touchdowns, seven interceptions, no bueno, but those final two games, he threw four touchdowns and zero interceptions. I think Washington is a team in transition. I think they're going to be competitive. I think they're going to win some games they shouldn't win. I think they're going to play spoiler in a usually tight division. But they're going to come out with like six, seven wins in the end and just, you know. But I, I, I can't wait to see how this team looks on the football field this year. And don't forget former first-round pick Montez Sweat either in that group. Another right, one of those of dynamic course. pass rushers had of a heart course. condition that knocked him down in the, in the draft last year. Uh, Vic, you got the Giants. Do the G men. In New York Giants, bro. Um, listen, they had a good start to this 2020 season. They had some good free agent pickups. They had a good draft. Let me start with the draft. Uh, first and foremost, Andrew Thomas, fifth pick overall. Um, this is a kid that, I mean, we scouted, we felt like was the best, I'm sorry, yeah, fourth overall. We scouted this kid, we thought he was the best pure uh, left tackle in this draft. Um, you're talking about uh, very light on his feet, flexible, natural knee bender, great pass protector, and definitely improving as a run blocker, which is something they're going to need. Um, in the second round, they got Xavier McKinney, safety out of Alabama. Another another special player right there is going to start immediately. Um, you can move him around. He plays some free. Definitely uh, in the box as well. Um, another key pickup that they did, two, key, two more key pickups that they did in this draft was Shane Lemieux, um, guard out of uh, Oregon, who I think we're going to provide some, some guard depth there and a possible starter, as well as Matt Hurt out of UConn, um, tackle as well. 
another guy that can possibly start at the right tackle. So the, the Giants made an effort in this draft to get some beef on that offensive line. They need protection for the quarterback, Daniel Jones. But most importantly, they're going to need to create as much space as possible for Saquon Barkley. You spend a second overall pick on the kid. Uh, you know, just throw him out there on the field, get him some good uh, run blockers, see what can happen. Um, their free agent pickups, Cameron Fleming, offensive tackle, right tackle. Uh, this is a guy that's going to start on the right side immediately. Uh, James Bradbury, corner. Um, Leonard Williams, who they franchise tagged. That's a big, big uh, uh, person to bring back for their 3-4 defense. Um, you got Lake Martinez, uh, sorry, Blake Martinez out of the Packers. This is another tackling machine right here who's going to play in the middle. Uh, he might get his tackles five, six yards deep into the into the into the game, but I mean into the game from the other team. But hey, this kid knows how to tackle. And then a very important, underrated. Jeremy, why are you laughing so much, bro? I just got. It. I just know it was so much Saquon slander that you wanted to throw. <laughs> Listen, he ain't done. You got the tight end, Levine T T Tiliolu Tiliolu. Mm -hmm. This dude, this is a 6'8", 270-pound tight end who will be another, basically, a sixth offensive lineman. They're going to play a lot of 12 personnel, meaning they will have their two tight ends on the field. You got Evan Ingram as your joker tight end. You got uh, Levine is who I'm going to – is how I'm going to – name. Um, Tylolo. Tylolo is how I was going to describe mm -hmm. him here. Uh, probably, you know, let's see if Mo is right on that one. But – um. Again, another offensive lineman there. This kick, this guy can block. So um, again, just just put as much blockers as you can on the field for Saquon. All right, now we got the the Eagles coming out of Philly, the city of brotherly love. Listen, man, you still have one of the best quarterbacks in football. We're just gonna leave it at that. I don't. I just want to get that offensive overview out the way because it's really not much to say about the offense. Moving forward, though. You lose Malcolm Jenkins. I think it was about time for him to go anyway. You lose Nigel Bradham, who I think is your best um, defensive player, especially in the linebacking core right now. And uh, you also Cox. lost. Well, I mean, besides Fletcher Cox, I mean, yes. that's a different guy. That's a different guy. Yes, yes. We're, we're talking about anybody not named Fletcher Cox. Yes. Nigel Bradham would be one of those guys that we want. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Shepard. <laughs> Good. I'm sorry. I so, apologize. Well, my guy, so so another key loss that I felt, I thought Vitae was a key loss for them this, this offseason because now they're in a situation with Andre Diller being hurt that they're they're really trying to search for a left tackle because Peter said, hey, you want me to be a, a left tackle? You need to pay me like one. So that's going to be interesting. Now, as far as signings, they did bring in Darius Slay to help solidify some of the things they do with their corners. I think that's a big pickup. I think also by them picking up Jatavius Brown to be that be that linebacker that replaces Nigel Bradham, I think that's an interesting pickup as well. And then they added more speed by adding uh, Marquise Goodwin. Um, I think that that's going to be a very very intriguing pickup. But the thing I think the biggest pickup that they did make is adding depth to the defensive line for another year in a row by adding Javon um, Hargrave. They signed him to a three-year deal, $26 million fully guaranteed, $30 million, $39 million overall. I think that's going to be very, very intriguing to see how that defensive line comes together and continues to get pressure and those type of things. Listen, this is about Carson Wentz at this stage. We're going to be completely honest. So they come in and they bring him a weapon. They bring him a guy who they're going to utilize a lot, and I think he's going to be a very good player for them. Bring in Jalen Rieger in the draft. The head scratcher of it is they brought in Jalen Hurts, which I don't know what really what they're going to do. But let's see what happens. And then um, Kavon Wallace, the safety from Clemson, he's a guy who plays a little bit of ball over the field, kind of like Isaiah Simmons did as well for that Clemson program. I look to see how they put all of those things together on the field. But I like what I have seen so far um, from what I from, from everything that I've heard from, heard from camp so far from Philly. These are all solid guys uh, moving forward. Philly is going to be Philly. I think they're going to be top two in the division, guaranteed for sure. I think they do a good job of different things. It's just going to be, does the offensive line play well enough? And does Carson Wentz take care of the football? If that happens, we're going to get them back in the playoff contender picture again. And who knows, as we say, all it takes is just get to January. We'll see. 
Um, Indeed. Next, we got the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, Cowboys. Yeah. So with that being said, I'm going to start off with their subtractions. That's my job, sir. Yes, sir. So um, as we know, the Cowboys were 8-8 eight eight last year. Uh, so the jokes are just going to keep coming with Dallas. They lost some players on offense, but I don't think any of them were significant. Uh, outside of um, Xavier's, Xavier Suafilo, the offensive lineman who now moved on to, to uh, Cincinnati, actually. Uh, but they also and, – and as well as Travis Frederick. He retired. Uh, so that – yeah, definitely big loss. Uh, Michael Bennett is gone. He also retired. Robert Quinn left. He's now with the Bears. So did Malik Collins. And then in the secondary, they lost Jeff Heath and Byron Jones. Now, Jeff Heath is not, you know, Jamal Adams or Cam Chancellor. But he's, he's somebody who gives you range. He's somebody who gives you tackles. He's somebody who gives you a bit of physicality there. Um, and then you obviously lost Byron Jones. So that secondary is, is a whole new secondary. They lost Brandon. They just brought back Brandon Carr. I don't know how excited uh, Dallas fans are about that. Not much by the, by the look on Vic Jr.'s face. Um, I'm a Cowboy fan. <laughs> so, yeah, man, I don't know. I mean, they, they lost depth in that secondary. They lost some offensive linemen. Uh, we will get to their gains. But but there are some significant losses this offseason for Dallas, for sure. Now, real quick, uh, Brendan Carr was signed to the practice squad. It'll be the first time in 12 seasons he misses a game if he stays on the practice squad. That's insane. I don't – that's – hey. That's a, 12 seasons, he hasn't missed one game. It's a young man's game, so, baby. With that being said, Vic, draft picks. Yes, so the Cowboy draft picks, I mean, another one of those A-plus drafts that we gave out um, in the, in the you know, the draft grades uh, back in April. Um, we got C.D. Lamb, first round. Um, this was definitely a pick that, you know, caught people by surprise. But, hey, I mean, if you can add as much offensive firepower to help that quarterback, uh, you do it. Um, second round, they got Baby Diggs, Stephon Diggs' brother, cornerback Trayvon Diggs out of Alabama. This kid is long. This kid is, is, is a ball hawk. He's got some good hands. Um, very, very big catch radius. Um, you know, he's going to add some serious length to that secondary. Uh, you got third round, in the third round, Neville Gallimore, defensive tackle. Um, this is a guy that we gave a first round grade to. They got him in the third round. We think he can he can, um, he can be a serious contender for a position there, um, starting at, at you know at the uh, three technique for the Cowboys. Um, and then we got the fourth round, Tyler Badaz. Mo, you gotta you gotta you gotta translate us uh, last name. I mean, the last name for Tyler. Center out of uh, Wisconsin. I think you pronounced it right. As, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is a kid, man. I like, I is, I don't know, I don't, I don't know how to say his last name. Yeah, no, it's it's a tough one too. But mm -hmm. this is a kid that um, we feel has some upside. Um, there is some weaknesses to his game. Uh, the Ohio State defensive line gave him some issues. Uh, he does have some lateral quickness issues, but again, he's a center. Um, they'll be able to kind of protect some of that when if they use some of the tight formations on the offensive line. Um, you know, this is a kid that does have upside, though. So there was a, a pretty darn good draft by the Cowboys. They got a lot of guys that, that you can say are first-round grades um, in the first and second and third round. And some of the additions that they had in the offseason, they did sign a couple of guys that they end up losing to injury or dropping. This notable mention, Quint, Ha Ha Clinton Dix was dropped. And McCoy, obviously, he hurt himself as well. So he's no longer on the roster this year either. But they signed Don, T Don Terry Poe, which I think is a big addition in the middle of that defense. They also brought in Alden Smith. Now, this is going to be interesting because they got him on a deal, which two, two years, $4 million, up to $4 million with incentives and things of that nature. It should be interesting to see what happens. But if you do get a guy who is even, even half as engaged as he once was, that will give you that that natural pass rusher that you need in this offense and put on opposite side of my guy, Mr. Strip Sack himself. Um, Demarcus uh, Lawrence. Demarcus Lawrence. D-Law. Yes, sir. As yes, they call sir. him in Cowboy Nation. 
And they also signed, I just want to say this just so we can have some fun. It's a dialogue here. They signed my guy, Joe Looney. It's Looney. It's French. But <laughs> to a one-year deal. Um, I think that's another guy who's going to help put the, put the interior of that offensive line together, as we know. And uh, also, they signed Everson. They signed Griff, Everson Griffin. He's also another big signer for them. So they got some pass rushers. They as well as Randy Gregory is reinstated. Randy Gregory being re reinstated is another thing that comes into play here. So the Cowboys have a chance here to have a very good pass rush. They just need to put it together on the football field. Um, overview for, for everything that they, that they got. I mean, the biggest addition may be the fact that Dak Prescott didn't sign a deal and they got Mr. Um, uh, Andy Dalton. Uh, Andy Dalton. I'm looking at, I'm look, looking for his name right here. Andy Dalton to a one year deal. And with those things being said, I think that the key thing is this is one of those offenses in football that you don't too much have to worry about certain things. Like you don't have to worry about trying to go out and win a lot of games because as, as long as you keep that offense on schedule with Zeke Elliott, Amari Cooper, now C.D. Lamb, Blake Jarwin, and um, Michael Gallup, it should be very interesting to see if Dak struggles, they may call for Andy Dalton, the Red Rock. Listen. If Dak struggles, or if Dak gets injured, God forbid, or he's got a concussion protocol, or he's got to go change his socks, or he got to go change his cleats, or he's got to go use the bathroom. If Andy Dalton touches that field, things are going to get uncomfortable in Dallas. All right, that's all I'm going to say about it. If Andy Dalton touches the field, it's going to get uncomfortable. In Dallas, Vic. We 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 know that got some issues, but he's still, to me, in my opinion, a significantly better quarterback. But I get what you're saying. If it comes to it huh? You saying Dak Prescott is a significantly better quarterback? Significantly. Bro, Dak. Germ, Germ, could you please take out the dictionary? Yo, yo, this yo, man yo, said significantly. Mike, <laughs> stuck in your beard, brother. All right, we can't hear you. But <laughs> Listen, you said significantly, Vic. Significantly, bro. Significantly. significantly better quarterback right now. You know, Vic, than now you can't be mute, Vic. Mr. Santana, you, you will be muted if you say that word one more time. No, significantly, no. Bro, if, bro, if, we, if you like him better, you can like him better, bro. It's okay. We didn't say he wasn't Jack, better. Jack a top 15 quarterback. Maybe. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe. We did this list before, and he came 12 and 13 to us. No, nope, the first okay. one. Okay, but even on. if, but even if, but even if, let me, even if, right? I know Andy I, Dalton, yes. over the last two years, you know, we know his struggles, right? But if you look at him for from 2013, 2014, 2015, he, he at times played like a top 10 quarterback. Yeah, so but Andy is, Dalton's best is better than Dak Prescott's best from what we've seen so far. Oh, okay. Hey, I mean, listen, this is a what can you do for me now league, right? Sure. So it's been a couple years. He's, he's, he hasn't looked good. And I think he, he was a serious hindrance to the Cincinnati Bengals, along with the coaching staff. Mm -hmm. he was another serious uh, hindrance to what they were able, to, to the capabilities that they had offensively. Me. Joe Burrow will show that. We well, know Joe, Well, Joe Burrow also is going to get a line that's going to be healthier. He's also going to get an A.J. Green back. He's also going to get a couple of other things that are going to go his way. So I don't want to do I don't want to do Andy Dalton too bad, considering that Andy Dalton has not, hasn't played with the best offensive line in football or one of the top five offensive lines in football this, like this, Dak has. This, this, he hasn't this. also played with that type of talent that they have all around the football, and we're talking about everything that that Dallas offense possesses. They possess some of the best skill position players Amari Cooper by himself is better than every receiver that Andy Dalton's played with outside of A.J. Green. That's out of A.J. Green. We can argue, and we can but argue. A.J. Green. <laughs> but, it does, but, but, bro, we can argue that him and A.J. Green are almost very, very similar. The difference is, is certain things A.J. Green does better that makes A.J. Green better. We well, argue. let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. I will say this with my chest as well. A.J. Green, in his best, is significantly better than Amari Cooper. From what I've seen so far. But but all I'm saying is with Andy is 
we know we know what the situation has been in Cincinnati for the last few years. And I think if now with Dallas, new offensive line, new coaching, better weapons, rejuvenated, remotivated, refreshed. He, we've seen we've seen guys who it just it 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 flames out in one place and they go to a next place where they're not necessarily expected to be the starter, but but one way or another they find their way on the football field and it's like oh, this is the guy that that team X drafted to be this player, and all I'm saying all I'm saying, if Andy Dalton touches the football field. It's going to get uncomfortable. I, I, and I agree with you on that. I agree with okay. you on that. But okay. I, I still think, think that I think the Cowboys offense will digress if that were to happen. Okay. You know what's funny? Okay. Mm-hmm. They may actually be better because it may force them to do some things that the offense should be doing. Instead of going down the field, they may have to go a little bit more intermediate. And that may be in the best interest of, say, Blake Jarwin who I think is a pretty good player, say Amari Cooper, who quick slant to turn into an 80-yard touchdown. At least you don't have to worry about him doing those. Elliott coming out the backfield, screen passes, all those different things. So I'm just saying. CD Goat. I mean, I mean, just a couple things. Again. They got a lot of guys that went in telephone booths. All of them are six six foot at least, too, by the way, Vic. Dak is a top 15 quarterback. Sure. Dak is a top 15 quarterback. We know his struggles. We know, right. we know we, we've made it clear that in order for you to win a Super Bowl, you have to be one of the elites. He is not an elite, but he is in the top half, though. But and he, Dalton, I don't know. You could win a Super Bowl with Dak at his best. You could also win a Super Bowl with Andy Dalton at his best. I don't know that. I don't think so. I disagree. I- did you are you forgetting his 2014, 2015, Bro. 2013? Let me let me ask this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, five years Trent, ago. Trent Dilfer won a Super Bowl. Brad Johnson what? won a Super Bowl. We we've been all through that, bro. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. No, 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 no. Like the the Brady haters now. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Watch, watch, watch yourself. Watch yourself, dear Junior. Um, literally, watch yourself, Junior. Listen, th- th- this is what I want you to understand. All it takes is for the defense to be opportunistic, have a solid running game, and those two things by themselves will solve a lot of things in, 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 in general. If mm. That means Dak just has to play on time, on the money football, and I know Andy Dalton can play that way behind that offensive line. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's been in the AFC North. He's been in the Ohio area his entire career, and all I've seen from Andy Dalton – is I've seen inconsistencies with a lot of things around him that also affected him as a player. Yeah. If you put him in a, a better culture, we don't know what we're going to see. We don't know what. So, we don't so know at what. the end of the day, that's Listen, all I'm going to say. I personally see a guy that misses a lot of throws, but we could study this. You know how it is. And Dak doesn't? I mean, I was just going to well, ask. This. Like, are we talking about throws that, like, he, le- he leaves them short. Like, his arm strength is gone. Vic, and Dak doesn't? What do you mean Dak does bro Dak Bro, is, I've seen Dak I, listen, I've seen I've seen Dak with some yes. with some one bounces to first plate plenty of times. He still okay. can't go accurately to the sidelines. How do you know Andy can't? We've seen Andy do it. No, when? What do you mean? So you're telling me you have you've never seen Andy complete comebacks to Tyler Boyd and to AJ Green? Well, we're gonna we're gonna, we gonna Mohammed Sanu. We're gonna study this. We, we can study it all you want to, because I'm going I'm to show you. There is not a significant difference between Andy Dalton or Dak Prescott. And from what I've seen so far, Andy Dalton at his best, I've seen better than Dak Prescott at his best. From what I've seen so far. And it is simply off of one Andy Dalton played almost MVP caliber a few years ago. And, and Dak... Dak, look, Dak, Dak, Dak can only do so much because he is polished and he is strong and he is physical, but then you still see all these inaccuracies and you still see all these sh- throws that are short or that are underthrown. And it's like, 
what 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 am I supposed to evaluate other than there's just something not clicking for you? Right. Again. I'm going to be perfectly clear. I think Dak is a top 15 quarterback. That's not that's not a big statement because Jimmy Garoppolo is a top 15 quarterback. And, mm-hmm. and what? What's wrong with that? You're making it seem like that's a bad thing. That's bad. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. That's what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is that's how real the quarterback position is. We said it. Remember, why did we do a top five show? We did a top five show because we said we do top 10. We're not going to hurt enough feelings. Top five is really the cream or the crap. The yeah. creme de la creme. Okay? Shout yeah. out to T.I.P. Right. And what's separating Dak from that group is his inability to perform in the toughest situations, to throw the ball accurately in the toughest situations, to make the best decisions in the toughest situations. Be consistent that, in, the, in the toughest situations. He has shown that he can take over a football game. Have mental lapses in tough situations. Oh, I, I'm that's sorry. What that's what I'm saying. He, that's where he, that's what's separating him from the top five, top ten list. Uh, all right. Clearly, we're gonna have to finish this. What, we're, what clearly, we're gonna have to wrap this up. What, 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 what that being said, y'all, yeah. Make sure that y'all check it out. The scene, you on the twenty-two. We got another video coming up. Y'all stay tuned for that. We got a whole another division coming up next time. But with that being said, this will be something you guys will see more often because we're gonna start arguing. All yes. the time, just yes. because because I don't like anything like this going on. I don't like blasphemous statements. So with that being said, make sure you guys see the next video, and we out.